This is Andy Paul Wolf, Boxing Social, in association with Bet Fred. We're in London, and now I'm joined by Connor. Ben, Connor, firstly, how are you? I'm good, mate. You? I'm good. I know you're in a bit of a rush, so we'll try and keep it kind of brief. But obviously, just kind of firstly, an update on yourself. I know I've seen your Instagram post. You're pushing, you're gunning for the Keith Furman fight. Is that the one that's at the top of your list, I imagine? Uh, yeah, listen, it, I'll just leave that with the team um, and sorting the fights because at the end of the day, it's all well in me saying what I want, but, um, you know, it's what can materialise. You know, it was supposed to be July 9th, but it's getting, it's cutting it pretty close. Because no world level fighter is going to take a fight on um, seven, eight weeks notice. So, you know, obviously, I'll just make sure I stay ready. And, um, Whoever they present to me, um, you know, it's a yes from me and my team. So it's just a matter of getting them fights done and made. I know you said it's a yes from you and it's a yes from your team, but who is, is key for one that you want on a personal level? Most definitely. Most definitely. But I've not shied in saying Mikey Garcia, Danny Garcia. Um, you know, these are the sort of challenges I want. So um, it's whatever can material, whatever they can make happen, whatever's best for my career. At the end of the day, um, I'm a businessman. Um, do you know what I mean? If it makes money, it makes sense. Um, as well as obviously the titles, um, which is a, a, the ultimate goal. Uh, so, you know, I'm sitting quite comfortably in all the governing bodies. So it's only a matter of time before um, you know I capture the world title. Speaking to Tony earlier, he mentioned how kind of some of the other contenders are going down maybe other routes, i.e. Jaron Ennis amongst others, going down different total routes. And for yourself, the most likely might be the WBO, and obviously yourself and Keith are highly ranked there. Do you think it would take for a final eliminator to be ordered to make that fight? Because I'm sure you're aware it's no secret that maybe Eddie's and PBC's relationship isn't the best. Do you know what? They're, they all beefed, don't they? So it's not really like, you know, uh, people think the fights are as easy to get made as they get made. Do you know what I mean? But it's not It's not as simple as one plus one, unfortunately, um, you know, which is annoying. Um, but... It would have to be um, it made as a final eliminator. I can't see PUC going, oh yeah, we'll let him fight on the zone show. And, you know, I don't see my team going, yeah, we'll let him fight on a on a PBC show. So it would take for a final eliminator to be ordered, which could very well be. Um, and if it is ordered, um, you know, made a best, the highest purse bid of win. I'm interested to know, kind of, you know, your Lord is with Matt Trum have stuck by you from the beginning of your career, no matter what, it'll always be difficult if ever a scenario came where you wanted to leave. But we've seen some guys kind of start to go on their own now without a promoter, i.e. Devin Haney is on his own, got the Cambosas undisputed fight. Javante Davies said after Raleigh Romero on Saturday, he's going to be a free agent so he can go and chase the other big names. Do you think at some point that might be something you have to consider, especially if you continue to be built in the manner you are and people look at you as potentially the next British pay-per-view star? Uh, genuinely, um, no. Um, I think um, Matchroom have done me so well in my career and I trust him to make these big fights. I trust him to deliver the big fights. I mean, they haven't let me down so far. Um, so, uh, you know, listen... They've got me to where I've got to. It's like people going, oh, well, would you change? Say if I lost my next two fights, would I change trainer? No. My trainer's got me to where I am now. Do you know what I mean? My promotional team have got me to where I am now, sitting top five every governing body. You know, as well as being, as well as being a young millionaire. So it's like, what well, I'm then going to go, mm, sorry, guys, see you later. The grass is greener. Because reality is the grass is never greener. Do you know what I mean? And that comes across life. Do you know what I mean? You know, what Matchroom have done with me have, you know, from day one really, um, you know, so it's not only match. I invest in Eddie Hearn, I invest in Brent, I invest in what they're about. I invest in, you know, how they looked after me because they invested in me, um, you know, when I wasn't even tipped to do anything in the sport. Do you know what I mean? They took a chance. So, you know, and it goes vice versa. I know people are going to go, oh, maybe that's really naive of you. It's not, it's just the way I am. I, I work on relationship um, rather than um, anything else I think um, if you can have a relationship with your team um, you know that's you know team what makes the dream work so what, who can say uh, being a young millionaire when I first turned pro it wasn't a factor who's happy top five every gun body it ain't just me and my work ethic it's my trainer and all the time he's invested it's my it's my promoter and promotional team it's, it's the whole package uh, you know it's like a final machine 
I know outside of world level, kind of the, the Amir Khan's, the Carl Brooks were mentioned. We've seen both of them retire recently. I actually saw a post which I know you saw the funny side of, which saw a, a photo of Kellen and Amir together and a, a picture of you saying, wow. you know, crying that <laughs> the pair of them had kind of sailed off into the sunset and to enjoy the retirement. But uh, away from the funny side to it, especially the Carl Brook fight, are you disappointed that that fight can't materialise now? No, I'm not disappointed. I mean, it was the right call. And I'm glad he has retired because he gets to retire on on a high. Do you know what I mean? Rather than him fighting me and you know potentially that all going going downhill. Do you know what I mean? So listen, every every up and coming contender, prospect, whatever you want to call it, dreams of facing their the people they put up there. So you know it's always it's always been respect. It's all it's business as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, and you know that fight would have made a lot of sense in progression of my career, not so much about him and his. Do you know what I mean? But in progression of my career, so you know I'm thinking about what's best for me. Do you know what I mean? Me and my family. We saw Jerome Boot tennis recently out with a, another stoppage victory. Did you catch his fight? Did you see his performance? I did. Um, no, I watched the knockout. The knockout was good. It was a good knockout, to be fair. I mean, the geezer didn't get back up. You know, you can't you can't um, moan about them. I know it's not one which is kind of in the immediate pipeline, but down the line, how big of a fight do you believe one between yourself and Jerron could be? Uh, you're talking next couple, few fights. Providing the next fight's a final eliminator or for a world title even. Um, so fight can, the fights can happen. The fight can happen, you know, one after the next one. Do you know what I mean? I can fight him for the world title. So it's... Whatever door opens, opens, and you know we'll walk through them doors. Outside of Spence and Crawford, kind of, who do you actually believe is the toughest test at one four seven, or would you say Furman is? No, I wouldn't say Furman is. I'd say Boots on his side. Say obviously Virgil Ortiz potentially move up with Virgil Ortiz. Um, there's a few few Russians um, up there. I can't remember the names. Do you know the names? Stanionis. No, I, wasn't, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him fight. Um, but Boots, Butiev. No, no, not Booty. What's that guy's name? Butiev or um, oh, two? Butiev, but, yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, him and then the other guy. Uh, my mind's going. Blank yeah, now. but you know, what I'm talking yeah. about. I'd say those are. Well, but then again, they're like 30, 33, 34. When you're talking up and coming, like who's going to be that run the next ten years? Yeah, you're talking the likes of Boots Ennis, Astanios is young, and he. 24 or 26 or something like that. Yeah, young. Um, so you're talking them sort of names. Do you know what I mean? Virgil Ortiz. Um, and it's funny because you put you mention their names and um, it's funny because you don't talk. There's not many Brits that can compete. Do you know what I mean? Um, when you're talking Brits, I don't think I don't think many can compete. Do you know what I mean? Is that a little frustrating? Not frustrating, but. When you look at it again, look at your career and how much fans would love to see a big domestic clash down the line between yourself and say another British foe for a world title. But do you look at the scene and think there isn't anyone who could be in that position? I mean, the one which people still mention is Michael McKinson. Yeah, but mate, you want to fight Michael McKinson? Not being funny. Just so boring. The only people calling for it are the people who's going, oh, you're scared, you're scared. Mate, you don't, you know, no, one's, no one in the top ten in the world, top five, is scared of anyone. Do you know what I mean? Especially not someone who's had one knockout on their record. Do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, he's, he's, his record don't suggest that he's a puncher, but he's heavy-handed, he says. So, I'm definitely not, it's not scared. I'm not interested in boring fights. The only people to keep calling for it are people from where he's from. Dan is local. Do you know what I mean? Apart from that, no one's interested in watching a boring fight. You know, I was hoping Congo would do beats, but he's I, he's not that he's not that great. So hopefully, this fight that he's fighting for Mello in, um, he can make a statement because then it's big. You had Josh Kelly, who's you don't know what he's doing with his career. You know that would have been a massive domestic, and I was pushing for that. I was gunning for that. Do you know what I mean? Because that'd have been a great fight. Do you know what I mean? I'm not about these boring fights, like. You know, people with one knockouts and horrible, boring style. I'm just, I'm not interested. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather uh, the fight, the last four fighters I faced. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they were tipped to bring me a hard night's work. 
Sammy Vice was tipped to bring me a hard night's work. Do you know what I mean? Koivala, you know, took Lena Bundu nine rounds. So it's like these are the sort of fights I want. We're sort of, we're, do, we're using our measuring stick, engaging of how good I beat these opponents presented to me, in comparison to who they fought in the past. You know, so I hope there is. I mean, listen, there will be a massive domestic somewhere, but at this current current moment, I don't think there's anyone that's going to make for a good domestic fight for me. Chris Eubank Jr., did you have any further talks since we last spoke? It's probably what, four or four months ago when Matt was first mentioned? I don't think he would take the fight. I don't think he'd take the fight. Would you happily jump to 160 for that fight? Would it have to be a catch weight? It would be a catch weight, I suppose, but he, he, um, I don't worry. I wouldn't lose no sleep over fighting him on 160. I wouldn't lose no sleep at all. Do you know what I mean? I'll fight him, I'll fight him next. If that got presented to me, um, if that did, do you know what I mean? I'll have that fight any day of the week, twice on Sundays. Well, can I just want to quickly skip through a couple of things because we've just hit 10 minutes and I know you've got to shoot off. Um, Joe Cordina, obviously, he gets ready for his first world title till next weekend. Talk to him about how he's been looking and what you're expecting to see. I watched that um, Kenichi Ogawa. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I pronounced that right, but I think I did. Anyway, I watched him the other, the other day and. Um, He's tough, he's strong, he's composed, he likes coming on the front foot, but you know, they don't, Joe ain't a Welsh wizard for nothing. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I've watched him perform many magic tricks, including on myself inspiring. Um, he hit me with two shots one day, and I was like, didn't even see them. I just, I just laughed, I, I actually laughed, because it was like, I did not even see them shots. Do you know what I mean? It's different when he got 16 ounces on as well. So, you know, when he's got the eight ounces on, hitting people with shots like that, you don't see coming. It's not the shot you see, it's the shot you don't see. What's your final prediction on that? I say final, it might change by then, but what is your prediction? On? On Joe's fight. Felix said points. I think there's going to be sticky moments for Joe. Maybe. Nah, but Joe's in great shape. But I haven't seen much this camp. But I know I saw him spy the other day and he was sharp. But I don't... No, I don't know if they're... I think, I think Joe's one of them fighters where, like, he's, he's spiteful. Do you know what I mean? So I say sticky moments, but I think they'll only bring, like, the that spite out in him that he has. Do you know what I mean? Like, you see it in the sparring, like, he gets, he gets um, you know, like, yeah, what? Do you know what I mean? He's got, like, that, that about him. And I know he don't come across as intense as me, like, shows it, or it ain't on display, but he's very spiteful. Do you know what I mean? So I think that Gal when he comes and he tries it and he and he hits Joe with some good shots, Joe's just gonna be like, Yeah what? Fire straight back at him. Do you know what I mean? Let him know he's in a fight in his hometown. You know, so I reckon Joe I won't be surprised if Joe catches him with a body shot. Do you know what I mean? I, I really wouldn't. Um I I think it'll be later rounds, but it's gonna be a great fight. Do you know what I mean? Because Obviously, this Agawa, he I watched him do 12 rounds at pace. Do you know what I mean? With that... Um, Fazile. Fazile. Do you know what I mean? I watched him do... But then, that Fazile ain't no Joe. At all. So, start to make fights. And I think um, Agawa pushing pressure will allow Joe to do what Joe's got to do. Do you know what I mean? Make him miss, make him pay, which he's so good at doing. So, I reckon late round, body shot. Uh, John Ryder and Billy Joe Saunders. Eddie Hearns mentioned that one. What were your thoughts on a potential rematch there? I think I think um, I think uh, John wins that. Yeah, I think John's been um, a lot more consistent. Um, he's had a lot more fights in the time Billy Joe has. He's um, John's like one of these guys that just seems to keep keeping improving, improving and working and working. Like he's in the gym. I said to John, I'm not fine till September. I need to take a leaf out of his book. Do you know what I mean? Because he's he can train for six, seven months of the year, no fight date on the horizon, and just keep working, working. Do you know what I mean? There's always stuff to work on. You mean John's been pro for before? I mean, before I was even amateur, but he's still learning. He's still working. So um, I think um, John's bricklaying, so to speak, um, and his foundations, and just you know, he's got he's got a mansion there that he's built over the years. And kind of final one, um, Joshua Boatzi beating Craig Richards this past weekend. Craig obviously trains out of his gym, just not with your trainer. Just get your take for on that fight. 
it was um it was it, it was just upsetting for me, do you know what I mean? Because obviously like he's well he's from the gym so it was upsetting because I know Craig has the tools there. Like and you saw it. And it was funny hearing Bellew's um scorecards when everyone has come up to me going had it draw even even um um if it was a loss it would have been Boatsy won. Do you know what I mean? But it really does depend on that, how you saw the fight. The fight was so close when it, at rounds where you could have either really given it to either. Do you know what I mean? But then what Boatsy would do is land that extra two or three shots. Do you know what I mean? Which maybe looked more appealing or landed on the gloves. But then it comes down to that hair thing. You know where the hair you got? He has the hair. Yeah. When he gets hit on the gloves, it still looked like he's getting hit. Do you know what I mean? Which my dad said to me when I had my dreadlocks and that. I had to cut them off because your hair, it makes it look was worse. That, was that the reason behind you doing it? Yeah, part of the reason, yeah. Do you remember that quivler fight? My, head was, my hair was yeah. like going all over the gaff. And I, well, no, I did get hit, but it looked worse. Do you know what I mean? But no, it was just, um, obviously he's my stable mate. So it was, um, I was just upset. Do you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, upset, frustrated, annoyed. Because it's, it's like you always get so close to doing it. But then, even if it was close, they were never like that scorecard one sixteen one twelve was it? Then even if it was like closer than that, I still don't think they would have given it to to Craig because obviously Boatsy's um, he's the one tipped to to be X Y Z. So um, yeah, that's that's it, man. It was just um, it was just fashion. Obviously, I was doing commentary on that on the fight. So for me, it's like. When you're like emotionally invested in into someone, it's hard to do do commentary. Like when they got me doing John or when they got me doing Ted's fight, it's um yeah it's hard, um, especially when they're your stable mates. Well, kind of leave it there now. Leave it to shoot off and enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you stopping to do this. If I can speak to me, box social. I'll see you next week in Cardiff. Sweet, I'll send you an invoice. <laughs>